Oh hey, it's more Sailor Moon, except very different this time. This one is for the Game Gear. Unlike its beat-em-up counterpart on the SNES, this one is a platformer, and it's a very simple platformer at that. There are still a few enemies to fight with hand-to-hand -hand combat, but they only take a few hits, and they're dispatched rather easily. Except for this guy, who only takes one hit, unless he runs into a wall himself, but he's easily the most troublesome hazard in the game. We'll be seeing him more later, so we'll have plenty of time to talk about him, but right now let's focus on the game design as a whole. The game is comprised of five worlds, each with three very short stages that act as little gauntlets. I say gauntlets because the stages feel more like very short endurance runs than normal platforming stages. Three basic elements make up these gauntlets, one being enemies, another being the platforming itself, and the third being random crap that just falls out of the sky. These hazards wouldn't really be any problem by themselves, but of course the game design helps glue them together. I told you the stages were pretty short. The way this game is designed makes it easy in general, but this first world in particular is even easier. So we're going to skip just a little bit ahead. Now, what I mean by the game design gluing things together is that the game places its two other hazards near or inside the platforming hazards like that brick right there. The end result is that all three hazards become more difficult to deal with. You see what I'm talking about. Placing enemies and such around platforming sections is by no means uncommon, but this game's design is pretty much based entirely around it. This leads me to believe that the game was primarily made either for people who don't play games much, or people of a very young age. Alternatively, the game's simple game design, ease of play, and short levels could have been meant to make a better portable experience. I mean, there's clearly an attempt at design here, however basic, and what little there is is well put together. There aren't really any issues that stop it from being a decent game overall, in spite of its short length and simplicity. The third stage of every world really just contains the boss and a very small platforming challenge. It is necessary to complete the platforming challenge in spite of the fact that it seems to be separate from the boss fight. Because if we didn't get that last item just now, we wouldn't be able to transform. The boss fights always start out with three enemies spawning. They're the only three enemies in the game, except for that bouncy fellow. And we can kill them in one hit because we're powered up now. I assume that's mostly for show. This boss is one of the only times the player is encouraged to use their ranged attack, which you didn't even know we had. The only reason we can't just jump at her is because she will try to stop our kick in mid-air. That being said, the boss is still very easy. So yeah, the game is a cakewalk to say the least, and the design is about as simple as design can get. But that being said, there's still nothing really wrong with it, unless the simplicity itself is something wrong by you. And if it is, this probably isn't your kind of game. <laughs> 